Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're just going to give it two more minutes for people to join and sign on and get themselves settled. Welcome, everyone. If you're on your computer or your phone, thank you for joining us today. We're going to get started in about one minute. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. We're just getting started and getting ourselves situated. We're gonna give about a couple more seconds for others to join and log on. Thank you for being with us. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our presentation today. Today, we're glad you can be with us to get to know the National Scholarship, which is part of the Dream.us program. Thank you so much for being with us. As my colleague Gabby Pacheco says in the chat, please let us know where you're joining us from. So we are a national program. We are all over the country um, and we want to know where you're joining us from. So let us know. Um, so to begin today, my name is Sadana Singh and I will be leading this English language presentation for you all um, at 4 p.m. Eastern, which is an hour from now. My colleague Gabby Pacheco will be leading the Spanish language presentation and we'll drop those links in the chat so that you can register for that too if you want to join that one right after this. So as you can see as well, we have a couple more team members from the dream.us on with us today, Hayne Lee, Elena Solario, and Melanie Butron. You'll probably see them in the chat. Um, they'll be helping answer some of your questions, dropping some helpful links in there. So this is the dream.us team here with you today and we're ready to go. So let's get started, everyone. So we are in a listen only mode. So please ask all your questions in the chat anytime you want to. Um, you should also have a raised hand feature to raise your hand if you want to speak out loud. But most likely you will have all the help and support you need in the chat from my colleagues. So let's get started. Let's get to know the National Scholarship. So who are we? We are the dream.us. We are the nation's largest college and career success program for undocumented students in the country. I myself am a former dream.us scholar. I graduated in 2018 from Trinity Washington University. And this scholarship being part of this experience in this program at college changed my life. And now I work for the program. So I serve as senior communications manager today, and I'm going to walk you through who we are, all the parts of the application, what our criteria means for you, how to apply, and some of the best tips on how to get your application in. So thus far, the Dream.us being in business, so to speak, we have been able to award over 7,500 scholarships across the country, and we now have over 2,000 graduates, including myself and my fellow dreamer, Melanie, who's on this call. Now, we are located in 21 states and Washington, D.C., where we partner with colleges to help dreamers achieve their higher education goals. So with all of this, our goal overall is to award 9,000 scholarships and have 7,000 graduates. So that, that's what you're gonna be helping with us today. So we're gonna get to this goal. All right, let's talk about the National Scholarship. So every year, there's something you can set your calendar to, the dream.us opens November 1st every year. So right now applications are open. You can go ahead and click that link on our website to start your application. 
The National Scholarship closes February 28th next year. So a quick way to remember that, it's the last day of February that the National Scholarship will close. After that, I'll show you a little bit how to check the status of your application a little bit later, but basically you're going to wait until around late April for the award announcements. So under the National Scholarship, we have two programs. So we have one for high school graduates. So those coming right out of high school, if you're a high school senior now, or maybe you've graduated high school a couple years before, and we have one for community college graduates. So same thing, maybe you're finishing up your associates right now, or maybe you have already earned your associates sometime in the past. So depending on where you are in your education journey right now, you would fall into one of these two categories. So for high school graduates, our award is $37,000 for tuitions, fees, books, and supplies to get your bachelor's degree. And if you already have your associates, our award is $31,000 for tuition, fees, books, and supplies for you to get your bachelor's degree. So I'm going to stop there and see if there's any questions coming up. Oops, sorry. Give me one second to realign myself. Sorry, yep, yeah, I'm gonna stop there to see if there's any questions in the chat. I do see some questions. Um, let's see. Do you have resources for undocumented students once they graduate? Resources for how to use their degree when they are ineligible to work. So that's from Kenya. Thank you for that question. Yes, we do. So part of being in the dream.us cohort is that we're more than a scholarship. We do work with you throughout your career with us, so to speak, um, to help you get to internships and job opportunities with or without work authorization. All right. Quick question, will the webinar be available later or an email? Yes, we are recording right now and we will share the recording later um, through our Instagram, our Facebook. You'll also get an email if you've registered. Thank you. Let's see, can students with a GED instead of a regular high school diploma apply? Yes, absolutely. I'll speak a little bit more about that later. Do students who are in the asylum process qualify for their scholarship? Um, so technically, the scholarship is for those without any status right now, and I'll cover that a little bit later in our immigration criteria. Let's see, is this only for one year that the scholarship covers? No, the scholarship goes for the entire time that you're earning your associates or your bachelors. So depending on what degree you choose to get, we are with you for that entire time. Now, if you start out and you start going to a community college with us, and you're saying, yes, I'm done with my associates, I wanna get my bachelor's, we also allow you to continue at another partner college to get your bachelor's. All right. As an early college student, which amount do you receive? Hmm, I'm not sure I understand that one so much. Do you mean if you start as a first time college student, you will receive the $37,000 to get your bachelor's? All right, so I'm gonna keep going. Great questions, everyone. Love the enthusiasm, thank you. I'm gonna keep going and then we can continue on with questions later on. So let's talk about our partner colleges. So we have 70 plus partner colleges um, in many states across the country and in DC. These are some of our partners right now. We are in New York, Florida, Arizona, Illinois. Um, so we are trying to make ourselves more accessible to lots of dreamers around the country. Um, and the reason why we partner with these colleges is that the colleges have agreed to provide us with an affordable education that we then support you with. They also address the barriers and challenges happening to dreamers. So for example, you're not gonna go to this campus and be alone or be in a sea of numbers, you know, like everyone else. This is gonna be a campus where you can be in a safe space as a dreamer. You can speak to administration and faculty about your immigration status. They're there to work with you and help you through the college process, even though you are undocumented. Now, we have some great statistics on our current scholars that are already enrolled. So you will be in great company once you apply and are awarded our scholarship. So first year persistence rate, 94%. What does that mean? That means for those who start uh, with our award in college, 94% of those students go on to their second year of college. Basically, um, that means you, you have that drive and ambition to keep going and 94% is a great number for that. 
Overall persistence, 86%. That means those who fully graduate all throughout their time in college and earn that degree. And the average GPA is a 3.4. So we have some excellent scholars in our program who are really driven in and ambitious. And just like you, they've gotten this chance to go to college. All right, now let's talk about the criteria. So I think we'll get a lot of questions about this. So I'll go through this a little bit more slowly for everyone. So I'm going to be focusing a lot on what you see number one and number four. So as I mentioned, we have the two programs, one for high school graduates and one for community college graduates, and you'll see most of them are the same. So the first one, you can apply if you have DACA or TPS. So if you currently have current DACA or TPS status, you're good to go with that part of the eligibility. Now, if you don't have DACA or TPS, you can still apply. Now, the thing you have to meet is the fact that you have arrived in the US before November 1, November 1, 2016, and you otherwise meet the DACA criteria. So what does this mean? If you don't already have DACA or TPS, you have to certify on our application that you did come to the US before November 1st, 2016. You were before the age of 16 when you arrived. You do not have a criminal background and you've been to a US high school. So these are the criteria in DACA set forth by USCIS. We're using that same criteria, except we've changed that arrival date. So for our purposes, the arrival date is November 1st, 2016. As I said, going to number two, you have to have come to the United States before the age of 16. So it does not matter how old you are now when you apply. However, you must have come to the United States before you were 16 years old. Now, you must graduate from a U.S. high school by the end of this academic year with a GPA of 2.5 or greater if you're coming right out of high school. Now, if you're coming out of your community college with your associates, we have to, we do ask for your GPA to be 3.0 or greater, as you see on the right side of the screen. Now, number four. So knowing that uh, some college students, some undocumented students have you know, been able to go part-time to college and have not been able to enroll full-time. So maybe they take some credits here or there when they can afford it or whenever they get funds to be able to support themselves in college. We wanna include those folks as well in our scholarship. So we're giving you the chance to apply even if you've earned about 21 credits at a community college or at a four-year university. Meaning uh, we, we're looking to really help those who've not been able to go full-time to college before. So if you're one of those that maybe you started at a community college already, or maybe you started at a four-year, but you're not able to pay that full tuition to be full-time and you have less than 21 credits, you can still apply for our scholarship. That's point number four. Number five, uh, for high school graduates, you must be eligible for in-state tuition at the partner college that you want to attend. So for example, if you're in New York and you wanna to go to a public institution, you will be eligible for in-state tuition in New York. Now we do have some private colleges in our portfolio where that distinction does not matter so much, but generally you must be able to get in-state tuition with our national scholarship. Um, and the same thing goes for our community college graduates as well. You must intend to enroll full time in a bachelor's degree program, um, you know, late, no later than the spring term of the academic year. Um, and then you must also apply to the partner college and be admitted into the partner college. So a uh, thing that we say is while you're applying to the dream.us also apply to your college of choice in your state. So I think right after this, yep, I'm going to pause and take some questions. Gabby, would you be able to elevate some questions from the chat for us? Definitely. Okay, so we have some eligibility questions. Um, one specific person is wanting to know, they graduated in 2011 and they wanna know if they still can apply. Yes, absolutely. It does not matter when you graduated high school. So for example, I graduated high school in 2005. I know a really long time ago. And I applied for this scholarship in 2014. So it does not matter how long you have been out of high school or community college. Okay, so there's another question coming in um, saying, I wanna make sure I came to the US after the age of 16, but before November 1, 2016. So does that mean that I'm ineligible? Good question. Um, I'll have our colleague Elena answer that one for us, please. 
I did actually answer that one in the chat already and in working with that um, person one-on-one, -on -one, um, but it does make you ineligible. Unfortunately, you have to meet every eligibility piece of criteria in order to be eligible for our scholarship. Um, but there are definitely other scholarships available out there for undocumented students. And I'm gonna grab the link for um, a website that um, will be able to help you find some of those other scholarships. Thank and you, Elena. Pain, pain actually just threw it in the box for us. Thank you. And there was also another similar question, but this one was that they didn't come to the US before November 1, 2016, can they still apply? No, unfortunately, you would not meet our eligibility to apply. But like Elena said, there's other scholarships information and Hain put that scholarship information out there. Absolutely. Okay, so um, let's see. We have a question about a partner college. Um, specifically, it says, I see that Purdue has a partner online program, is this still for in-state only too? Gotcha, yes, Purdue Online is still a partner with us. I'll have Elena clarify about that as well, as far as eligibility. Sure, so with Purdue, it's not a matter of qualifying for in-state tuition, um, but Purdue is only available as a partner college in a state where we don't have a physical school located. So scholars and our applicants in Florida would not be eligible to use Purdue as the school that they wanted to attend because we have multiple schools located in Florida. So it's only in those states where we don't have a physical partner college that we have partnered with. Thank you for that. Okay. And then here's a question about eligibility specifically around asylum. Um, they want to make a clarification. So um, the question is, um, I have a student that has applied for asylum, but has not received a status yet. Do they qualify? So I can answer this one. So if people um, meet the criteria that they came before November 1, 2016, are undocumented and came before the age of 16, um, then they're eligible to apply. It does not matter that they are in an immigration process. We know that these processes take very long times to re get resolved. As long as the person, right now the person is undocumented, if you're an asylum seeker, it does not give you any um, immigration status with uh, the immigration um, department. And with us, that's the same, for the same matter. Uh, we just look at to see if you're undocumented, came before November 1, 2016, and came to the U.S. before the age of 16. Thanks, Gabby. Right now, we're getting more questions around um, uh, partner colleges, so I don't know if you want to continue and, and to a little yes. bit. Yes, I will continue. Um, and by the way, if you go to our website, thedream.us, you'll find the complete list of our partner colleges around the country, so that's all on our website. All right, I'll keep moving on and there's other places we'll stop for questions as well. All right, what does the application look like? Okay, so these are the parts of the application. So here you go, an inside look into it if you haven't started the application yet. Now we are gonna ask for some personal information. Uh, we do not ask for your home address or anything like that. We do not collect that information. So you're just gonna put in like your name, your email, um, your city state, things like that. But we don't ask for your street address. Um, you are gonna certify that you do currently have DACA or TPS or that you meet that immigration eligibility criteria where you came before November 1st, 2016. And I did see a question in the chat about if you already have DACA, do you have to meet that 2016 date? No, you don't, because you already have DACA. So that is an automatic qualifier for being eligible to apply to the scholarship. So next, you're going to select the partner college that you intend to go to in your state. And then you're going to put in the information on your high school or your community college. The next part is financial information. So we are going to ask you a couple of things to determine your financial need. Now, the thing to uh, 
keep in mind with this, we're not going to ask you to upload any kind of documents. Um, you don't have to get tax returns. You don't have to show anything from the IRS or anything like that. We do not want to keep those documents with us. So you're simply inputting numbers into the application. So we're going to ask for your annual household income. We're going to ask for how many in your household is supported by that income and the number of dependents supported by that income that will be in college in the next academic year. Again, you're just inputting numbers into our application. You're not going to upload any documents to show financials, no bank statements, nothing like that. Moving on to the responsibilities section. So you may be familiar with this on regular college applications. It's where you can talk about, you know, your extracurriculars, your community service, volunteerism, that kind of stuff. And we definitely do want to know if you have done that stuff and if you've been able to achieve certain things. But we also know that you have this thing called home responsibilities. So for a lot of us undocumented students, sometimes we are, you know, the main driver in the family. Like, we, you know, we take our siblings to school or we take our parents to work. Sometimes we help with translation at home. Sometimes we take care of our grandparents or our younger siblings. So we're calling that home responsibilities and we want to know. Um, we want to know how you take care of your family at home or how you help the household. So it may be that you didn't get time to volunteer or didn't get time to play a sport or do community service. Um, but we do want to know all the other ways that you are helping your family and your local community. So don't discount those things when you're applying, you know, don't say like, oh, I've not been able to, you know, do this extracurricular because, you know, I help my siblings with their homework after school, things like that. Definitely put that down on the application because we want to know. And lastly, we do ask for two essays. And there you have the topics. The first one is educational and career goals. And the second is overcoming adversity. So when I was applying as a, as a first time college student in 2014, I relished the idea of writing these essays for myself because I thought this was where I can tell, you know, the, the committee, the selection committee that reviews the applications, who I am, you know, what drives me, what are my ambitions, how long I'd waited for this opportunity and what I'm going to do with my degree after I graduate. So definitely do not overlook the essays. Make sure that you spend a lot of time perfecting your essays, work with a teacher or a mentor or maybe an older sibling or your parents to help you craft very good essays because that is also a weighty part of the application. We want to know, you know, what motivates you, what drives you, what, you know, what challenges you've overcome and what, what do you want to do with your degree after you graduate? How do you want to help your family or your community? This is your chance to tell us all of that. All right, next, what documents do we ask for? So if you are, um, coming right out of high school or you've already graduated high school, you have that GED where we are going to ask you for that transcript. It doesn't have to be official. It could be the unofficial high school transcript. Um, and then if you do have some community college, maybe you've started community college and you have, you know, haven't reached that 21 credit limit, you also can um, submit your official or unofficial community college transcript. Or if you did start at a four-year university as well. For community college graduates, same thing. Uh, we're going to ask for that community college transcript if you've already had your associates or you're about to have your associates. Um, and then same thing if you've earned any credits at a four-year university. Um, and again, these documents don't have to be the official transcript. They can definitely be unofficial. All right. So give me one second. All right, yeah, I'm gonna stop there again for questions. So Gabby, what have we been getting in the chat? All right, so can you explain a little bit about Georgia students? So if you live in Georgia, there's one partner college, Older Thorpe, that's available, um, but Georgia students, um, Arkansas students and North Carolina students have a unique um, ability to apply to what? Okay, so for those three states, as Gabby stated, Georgia, Arkansas, and North Carolina, um, they're what we call locked out states, meaning that students in those states, undocumented students, cannot get in state tuition. However, we do have one partner college in each of those states. So you actually have the choice of applying to our national scholarship to attend that one partner college in the state or you can apply to our opportunity scholarship. Now the opportunity scholarship does take you out of state 
to one of our five partner colleges out of state. So for example, I'm from Georgia, actually. So if I was applying to the national scholarship, I would say, I wanna stay in my home state of Georgia. I wanna to go to Oglethorpe University, which is our partner in Georgia. I would apply to the national scholarship. Now, if I didn't wanna to go to Oglethorpe or maybe I researched the Opportunity Colleges, we have five partners there and I say that, oh, I think I wanna to go to Trinity Washington University in DC, then you would actually be eligible to get $80,000 to go to Trinity Washington University from Georgia. Now, the $80,000 in our Opportunity Scholarship covers your tuition, fees, meals, and on-campus housing. It, however, does not cover your travel to or from your home state to our partner college, um, but you do get room and board and housing and all of that included in our award with the Opportunity Scholarship. So that applies to those three states, Georgia, North Carolina, and Arkansas. I hope that makes sense. Yes. Gabby? Thank you, all right, so we have a question around TPS. It says, I filled, I filled out for TPS, but it's in process. Am I still eligible? Okay, so as Gabby said before, as long as you currently meet that eligibility criteria that we have laid out, so you've come before November 1st, 2016, you were, you were you know, younger than 16 before you came and all of the other criteria, you can apply right now for our scholarship. Thank you. Okay, so um, there's a question around um, a student that's already in college and um, they haven't gotten any news from USAS. So they, they've done a petition to try to get a green card. They went to high school in New York. They're paying in-state tuition. They wanna know if they're eligible for the scholarship. And I think um, Elena answered that question in the chat. Um, so I don't know if Elena, if you wanna elaborate on the 21 credits. Sure. So um, as Sadana mentioned early on, we are looking to basically be able to award the scholarships to those who have never been able to afford to attend school or those who have only been able, able to pay for one class at a time, two classes at a time, and they have less than 21 credits. So that 21 credit threshold is anything that's going to take you through next summer. So you would have, by next summer, you have to have less than 21 credits to still meet the eligibility criteria um, to apply. Those who have been able to afford to pay for full-time classes, um, you know, within two semesters, you're going to be over that 21 credit threshold. Um, so it, it really is those, those students that we're looking to fund or those that just really can't afford. And, you know, it will take them so long to just, you know, basically attend school one class at a time. Great, thank you so much. And right now we're being asked on specific colleges um, if, and we are where we are in specific states. So um, Hayne had dropped the list of our partner colleges, but I'm also going to um, drop it in there again. Hayne, thank you for dropping it. Um, it's our list of our partner colleges and you can go to our website and see what states we're in and then the states that we're in, what institutions we have partnered with. And I'm going to jump in again real quick, Gabby. I just saw another question come in about the 21 credits, and they actually have earned some of those credits as part of dual enrollment. So dual enrollment credits do not count towards that 21 credit threshold. That is after we're looking for 21 credits after you have graduated high school and you're no longer in one of the dual enrollment um, type programs. Great. Thank you. Okay, we're getting a question asked about um, financial aspects. So I have applied, but it never told me to fill out the financial aspects of the application. So I guess um, what they're saying is that they didn't get to ask for tax papers or any um, documentation like that. And so Sadana, you wanna talk about that? Yep, sure. So make sure you're paying attention to all parts of the application. Um, and then I'll show you a little guide that we have as well to help you complete the application. But basically for financial information, knowing that we are you know, having the information of undocumented students, we do not wanna keep any of that stuff in our databases. So we do not ask you for tax returns, bank statements, pay stubs, nothing like that. You will not be prompted to upload anything like that, um, but you will be asked to put in those numbers, as I said earlier, on the parts of the application about your household income and things like that. So make sure it's not an area that you skipped. 
Um, so go back and read it carefully to make sure you're just putting in those numbers, but it will not ask you to put any financial documents in the application. Great. And right now they're asking about um, how many scholarships are we thinking of giving out this year? Got it. Gabby, do you want to take that one? Sure. So this year we're doubling down. And so we want to give, uh, we usually do a thousand scholarships every year as Elena shared in the chat, but this year we want to do a thousand five hundred. So this is a great opportunity for those of you that have been wanting to go to college to do so now and to apply to our scholarship because the likelihood of getting a scholarship is a lot higher now um, because we are um, having that uh, desire to give more scholarships out this year. Yay, that's very good news for everyone here. Okay, so there's a question that is, that's being asked about being able to apply for an out-of-state college with this scholarship. Sure, okay. So as part of the national scholarship, you have to be able to get in-state tuition in your home state if you're attending a public institution. So that list of partner colleges that my colleagues have dropped in the chat, you can like scroll to your state and you'll see all of the eligible colleges that you can apply to. Now you can go to an out-of-state college if you're from one of the 20 locked out states, which is part of our opportunity scholarship program. So that's a different program that we're not covering today. But if you're from one of those 20 locked out states from the opportunity program, that's when you can choose from one of our five partner colleges out of state. Um, so we will have an opportunity scholarship info session next month. Um, so look out for that if you want to learn more about that. And again, also go to our website, read up on both scholarship programs. All of the information is on there. Great. So Wendy asked a really good question, um, and it's, does receiving state aid through a state financial aid application make students ineligible for the scholarship? That is a great question. And the answer is no, as my colleague Kane says. So actually we do require that if you have received our award, our scholarship, you must apply for any eligible financial aid or um, state aid that you may be eligible for in your state. So we love to see undocumented students having both state aid or any other financial aid that they can get and our award as well. So, um, and I think that answered um, a question that came in saying, I'm applying in Illinois, which now has the Rights Act that allows undocumented students to receive state aid. Do I need to apply for the Rights Act application in order to receive the scholarship? So you just answered that question. Yes, please apply to both the Rights Act and our scholarship so you can get the most funds for college. <laughs> yes. And then um, can we apply to both Opportunity and the National Scholarship? I'm currently live in the lockout state of North Carolina. Yes, Brenda, you can. Okay. So um, here's a question around somebody who um, maybe is undocumented now and in the future gets a green card um, later in the years, will they lose their scholarship? Okay, great question. So as long as you meet our criteria right now, meaning you either have DACA right now or TPS, or if you don't have those, you came before November 1st, 2016, before the age of 16, all of that stuff, you can apply to our scholarship right now. However, as Gabby said earlier, sometimes a lot of these immigration processes like green cards and certain benefits do take several years to come through. So you will keep the scholarship throughout that whole time while you are out of status or without any kind of legal benefit. Now, once you do get permanent residence or citizenship, you will qualify for FAFSA, um, the ability to apply for federal aid, Pell Grants, things like that, and you will not be eligible anymore for our scholarship. But while you are applying for that immigration benefit to come in the future, you can still definitely be part of our scholarship program. Great. And I don't know um, if Luis still has, we have a raised hand from Luis. I don't know if he still wants to um, oh, yeah. ask this question out loud. So Luis, we're going to unmute you. Hi, yes. Um, the, my question is, what type of documentations will the students have to provide to prove that they have arrived to, uh, to the US before November 1st, 2016? Okay, that's a great question. I'll have Elena take that one. 
there isn't any physical documentation that they have to provide. Um, everything is provided in the application just through various questions um, that we ask of them. So they are basically self-reporting and agreeing or letting us know that they have arrived before that. Um, for those that do meet the immigration eligibility criteria, they are certifying under the penalty of perjury that they meet that criteria. So, you know, if we were to come back and find out, you know, later that somebody doesn't actually meet the criteria, they were actually, you know, 16 when they arrived, maybe 17, something like that, they actually um, are no longer eligible for the scholarship and their scholarship will be revoked from them. If that helps. <laughs> Thank you, Elena. All right, uh, should we move on? And then we'll ask some more questions later. Yes. All right, so let's talk about the timeline one more time. As I said, we open November 1st every year. Um, what that means is, for example, if you are a returning person applying to our scholarship, if maybe you applied in the past and you didn't get it, you are definitely welcome to apply again. And you keep that November 1st date on your calendar every year. Um, and the, the, the scholarship application closes February 28th, the last day of February. Um, no applications will be accepted after that date. So make sure you're um, not cutting it too close or being very last minute. Um, and then in late April is when recipients are notified. Whether they get the scholarship or not, you will get a notification. All right, and moving on to the guide I mentioned before. So this is very critical. Uh, we call this guide a must read. Um, so basically everything that I've just went through, everything that we've just gone through is in this guide as well as more stuff. So um, the guide takes you step-by-step step through determining if you are eligible for the scholarship, how to complete those different parts of the application that I went over. And then starting from step three, it shows you how to monitor your application online through our application portal. So I'll give you a little story about several scholars, several students who had applied for our scholarship, they submitted their application, they forgot about it, they went about their lives, they didn't check their emails, they didn't go back to the portal, and they didn't know that they were awarded this scholarship, this life-changing scholarship, and we, we don't want that to happen to anyone else. So we want to show you in this guide exactly how to go back to that portal where you're going to start the application to check on the status of the application. And now this is not just what whether you get the award or not. This is critical information. For example, if maybe you uploaded your transcript and maybe it was, you know, there's an error or a mistake or it's not showing or something like that, you can get a chance to change that and update that transcript before the application closes. So even though you may have, you know, finished all of the steps early and applied, make sure you're checking back into your application status to make sure nothing else is being required or asked of you before that deadline closes. Next, you're going to get the award notification. This guide tells you how that's going to come, the steps you'll need to do to accept or decline the award if you choose to. Um, and then it does have a deadline for you also to accept or decline that award. So these are things we want to make sure you're paying attention to so you don't miss out on the opportunity of being a Dream.us scholar because this has happened to some students in the past. Um, the other thing is we want to make sure that you're also using an email that you check regularly when you apply to our scholarship because we will be sending you messages through there. Um, not only reminders and other tips for the application, but like I say, number steps, you know, three and four, you're going to be getting uh, notices if you've missed something on the application or if we can't see your transcript or something like that, that you can fix in time before February 28th. And then lastly, if you are accepting our award um, and you are awarded to become a scholar in that event next year, um, the guide does tell you about the Dream.us pledge that we asked you to take. So this is on our website. If you go into the National Scholarship on our website, you'll see where it says National Scholarship Guide. You can download it. You can bookmark it. It's a PDF document. If you're working with someone um, on your application, a mentor or a teacher or a friend, you know, have them have this document with them and work with you as you do the application together so that you're going through all of these checkpoints. 
All right, and then something I mentioned earlier, the Dream.us is more than a scholarship. So we're not just about giving you the funds to help you complete your college education. We are um, also making sure that you're supported through college. Now, what does that mean? So at each of our partner colleges, as part of being in this program, they do designate um, a scholar and financial aid advisor on campus to help you throughout the college process. So again, these are team members members, staff members at your college who will be able to know your status and to help you through some of the things you may encounter, some challenges you may encounter at your college. Um, that's what you get as part of our program as well with our partner colleges. Um, if you are awarded the scholarship, you do join a national community of 7,500 scholars and graduates, including myself including my colleague, Melanie, who's on this uh, call with us. Um, and we do have an online Facebook group um, with about 5,000 of us in that, in that uh, group. And there you get to ask questions with everyone. You get to share resources. Um, a lot of us use that group to ask questions about DACA, TPS, different things like that. You ask questions about college. Um, so it's a great place to be as part of being in the Dream.us community. Um, next, we do help with mental health resources. We have a dedicated wellness advocate who is a psychologist that you're able to call or text. Um, if you're going through anything mental health wise, she'll be able to connect you to local resources wherever you are. Um, we do offer an immigration office hour, so to speak. It's an immigration you know, Zoom session where we do have an attorney that can answer your questions and give you resources. Um, we do also partner with other organizations that can help you, you know, um, renew your DACA, things like that, help you with the fees to renew your DACA. And then we also uh, help you, as I said before, get two jobs and internships. I mean, what's the end goal of all of this, right? You go through college, you earn that degree, you work very hard for it, and now you want a job that aligns with your passion and what you studied. So we do actively work on that um, throughout the year with you. We offer some coaching programs, career coaching programs to help you with interviews, um, that kind of stuff. And then we also work with organizations to help you with internships and jobs with or without work authorization. Um, and then um, on the grander scale, the Dream.us does federal and state advocacy as well, which is what Gabby Pacheco is heavily involved in. So we're not just helping you on the ground, so to speak, we're helping you in the halls of Congress, trying to advocate and make some changes for immigration policy that will hopefully make all of our lives better in the future. So it's more than a scholarship that you get when you apply to the Dream.us and be awarded as a scholar. All right, and then I know that some of you were getting, um, you know, to the end of our presentation, and we'll take some more questions. But I know that some of you may be thinking, um, you know, if college is for you, if now is the time for college, maybe you want to put it off a little bit, work, maybe help support your family, you know, make other life choices rather than going to college right now. But we just want you to know that you do belong in college. And we really encourage you to get your college degree now. So a lot of things, a lot of doors are open with a college degree, no matter when you get it, right? Right out of high school, or maybe you've been out of high school for a while like I was, or maybe you already have your associates. Getting your bachelor's degree is going to open so many doors for you. It's going to open careers for you that you can advance yourself and better support your friends and your family and all of those people in your community. You're, you know, there's career pathways available for you, even if you don't have work authorization, you know, we work um, very heavily with a group called Immigrants Rising, and they have a very um, broad program on entrepreneurship and working as an independent contractor. So there are ways to be out there in the career field without work authorization. Um, and then we know that any DREAM Act legislation or anything like that that Congress is about to propose you'll only be at an advantage if you're in college and you have a college degree. Um, and then lastly, no one can take your college education away from you. I'm very happy for all the students on this call today who've taken that first step to come learn about our scholarship because that means you're taking your future into your hands and knowing that no one will ever take that college education away from you in the future. And lastly, we just want you to know that you not only belong in college, but we will support you throughout your journey. Um, the people on this call that you see, all of my colleagues in the chat, they work very hard all the time, every day, 
um, sometimes on the weekends, <laughs> to support you all and make sure you're getting the resources and support and all of the great stuff you need to succeed in college. So that's the end of my presentation here. We do have some more time on our hour. We'll probably take a couple more questions. Um, Gabby, is there any other questions that have come up? So we have a question that came up. Somebody rose their hand. Um, do we want to take that one now? Yep, sure. Uh, let's see, it's Tandon. Um, hi. Hello. Um, well, um, so um, someone before asked my, uh, answered my question, uh, questions about, about the 21 credit. So I have been paying my tuition from on pocket. So I pay in state also. And then right now when I check the degree work, I have like 40, um, 46 credit. So it's like, it's like more than the one I, uh, it's for requirement for the application. So that's why I was thinking like, even though if I have more than the, the credit, like more credit than you asked for the application, do I get like little bit eligibilities of getting like not all of scholarship, but like a few? So are you at a two-year college or a four-year college right now? Um, right now, I'm in a four-year college. Okay, unfortunately at a four-year college, if you've already crossed that 21 um, credit line, you are not eligible for the scholarship. So I'm sorry about that. However, okay. if you were in a community college, I would say that you can go through a community college, get your associate's degree, and then perhaps next round, you can apply to our scholarship to continue your bachelor's. But if you're already at a four-year university and you've gone over that 21 credits, I'm sorry, you're not eligible. Oh, okay. Thank you. No problem. All right, we do have another hand raised, Yasmin. Hi, hello, my name is Yasmin, and my question is, so I got accepted into two of your partner schools, Ogothorpe and Wingate, but I live in Georgia, so would I be accepted to go to Wingate if I apply to both scholarships that is given? Okay, good question. So no, Wingate is not part of our Opportunity Scholarship, which is where you would go to a college out of state. So we have five specific colleges that are part mm -hmm. of the Opportunity Scholarship if you're in Georgia. So you would either choose to go to Georgia, or if you apply to the so Opportunity can... Scholarship, you uh -huh. would choose one of our five colleges and Wingate is not one of them. Okay, so what if I apply to both and halfway decide that I do want to go to the, one of the five colleges? Would that be acceptable? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, you're able to apply to both um, as you make your decision. Um, and then uh, you can definitely see if you're awarded the scholarships. You can make your decision after that. Okay, so I came here before the date that was allowed. And I am currently undocumented. Would that be a problem? So you did come before November 1st, 2016? Yes, ma'am. And you were under the age of 16 at the time? Yes. So yes, you would definitely fit under that immigration criteria, part of our, our eligibility criteria. Yes, you can apply. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, any more questions from the chat, Gabby, before we, we have a couple more raised hands? Yeah, so as a previous streamer scholar, do you have any advice on getting the scholarship? Ah, yes. Um, good question. Um, so as I mentioned um, on the essays, so that was where I took the most um, sort of focus on the application because I'd already, you know, had my high school transcript, my GPA was good in high school, things like that. Um, so I thought the way that I could really shine was in the essays. Um, so I had been out of school for a long time. Um, and that gave me a different kind of perspective on going to college, which was still one of my biggest dreams. And that's where I just sort of poured my heart into the essays. And I talked about a lot of the challenges I'd overcome, you know, in high school, um, coming to this country, um, waiting that long to go to college, things like that. So I would say definitely focus on the essays and telling your story. Um, as immigrants and as undocumented students, sometimes we don't want to brag on ourselves or we don't really want to, you know, put ourselves at the front. Um, but I think this is the time to put yourself at the front. 
So definitely uh, talk about all the wonderful things you've been able to do, um, even with your limited resources or experiences or what have you, everything counts and it matters um, for you to prove yourself, you know, that you are, you're worthy of this and you deserve it and that you also will get a, a good chance to do something great with your degree afterward. So I would say as a former scholar myself, I definitely use the essays as a way to tell my story and to make my case. Hope that helps. Thank you for that. All right, so there are a couple of more questions that have come in, but do we want to take one um, from the race hands? Yes, sure. There's Holly Genova. Hi, um, I work with students that are undocumented. And so I had a question about, is there degree requirements with the scholarship? Um, no, there isn't per se. Okay, so as long as they're accepted into one, meet the requirements and they're accepted into one of the partner schools, that's all of the requirements, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, I don't know if Elena has anything else to add to that. No, you said it correctly. <laughs> okay, Thank all right, you. thank you so much. Thanks, Holly. All right, uh, a question from the chat. Okay, um, so somebody wanted to know, um, let's see. So are there any support services for students who are not awarded the scholarship? For instance, are there services or resources they can still access at the dream.us? Gotcha, unfortunately, no. Um, if you are an awardee, um, and you accept the scholarship, that's when you sort of come into being a cohort with us in our program. And that's when you're able to get these other um, um, benefits and some of the other services and programs we offer. However, if you're not awarded the scholarship, um, as my colleagues have put in the chat, there are other scholarships and grants that are available that you could definitely check out as well. Correct. And so we're getting a question around DACA requirements. So um, making sure that we clarify the DACA is not required for the scholarship. If you have DACA, then you meet the requirement, um, but you do not need to have DACA. And all you need to be able to have is have come to the US before November 1, 2016, have come before the age of 16 and be undocumented. So um, we, in essence, there's three different types of people that can get the scholarship. Mm -hmm. Those that have TPS, those that yep. have DACA, and those that are undocumented and meet our criteria. Correct. So DACA is not mandatory. Yeah. All right, let's take a raised hand from Jenna Perez. Hi, uh, I am working with a student from New York who is currently applying to a few of your partner colleges that are in New York. And I'm wondering when he starts this application, does he choose all of the schools that he's applying to in New York that are partner colleges or does he just select one of them? Um, Elena, can you take that one? Absolutely. So in the application itself, he will select his first choice um, school. There's only the option to select one school in the application, but by the time acceptance rolls around, if he has been awarded the scholarship, he can change that selection um, all the way up into um, the beginning of the semester starting. Um, so if he, you know, gets accepted to multiple CUNY schools and, you know, finally makes a decision on one, he can make that change with us. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Sure. sure. I did want to just go ahead and add one other thing. Just I've seen it a couple of times around sort of the in-state versus private school. Um, partner colleges. With our private schools, those are still only available for applicants who live in that state. Our private schools um, help to clip because the cost of those schools is so much greater than in a state school. They help to provide the student with additional funding. And so they can only take a limited number of scholars every year. And so I just wanted to kind of clarify, even though we say you have to qualify for in-state tuition, if it's a private school in your state, you can apply for that school. But if you live in another state, just because it's a private school does not mean you can attend there. Thank you, with Elena. The scholarship. 
All right, and we are about ready to close out. I know you have tons of questions. Thank you so much for being so engaged. Um, I did put up a slide here. Um, we work with ISTS and you can call them or email them anytime to answer any of these questions that you have as well. Um, so in addition to this team right here on the call, um, you can call ISTS program support and that's their phone number and email right there and they will be able to help you with all of these questions, including eligibility and state tuition, the immigration criteria, all of that. So I just want to say a couple of reminders um, before we close out. Um, the application is application link is in our website. So go to our website, www.thedream.us. You'll see a menu item called scholarships and you'll select the national scholarship um, if that's what the one you are going for. Um, and then you'll see all of the things we talked about here. You'll see the full criteria. You'll see how to apply, including the scholarship guide. You'll see a list of all the partner colleges and we do have an FAQ page as well. So if you wanna dig into that FAQ page, it probably will also answer your question there as well. And then as always, you can still contact ISCS program support. And then the list of other scholarships have been the same one that my colleagues have been putting in the chat for you um, throughout this session. So that's a great resource, um, whether you get our scholarship or not, we recommend you check out that list of other scholarships for undocumented students to really maximize the amount of funds that you'll be able to get to go to college. Um, and then Gabby, we're right at two minutes. Um, any closing remarks? No, just make sure that you get those essays checked by somebody else, um, get some eyes on them and make sure that you have everything spelled correctly, everything grammatically is correct so that you can make the best of your essays and make your best case to the readers who are going to be um, judging your essays and giving you that feedback. Perfect. Thank you very much. And remember, don't try to do last minute submissions on February 28th at 11.59 p.m. Um, we definitely do not encourage that. I mean, if there's a technical glitch, if you lose Wi-Fi, if something happens, your application will not be accepted after February 28th. Um, so please make sure that you're doing, you know, maybe you work on the application a couple of weeks at a time and you do it step by step, but make sure you are submitting ahead of time so that if something is wrong with the application or you make a mistake, you can go back in and fix that um, before February 28th. And as I mentioned, the guide on our website will show you how to go back in, how to make those changes, everything. So thank you all very much for being with us. 